the grunge rock band Pearl Jam has enjoyed a great deal of worldwide success. With 11 studio albums released to date and more to come in the future, I'm sure, we take a look back at the history of the band and how they came to be. So before we got to Pearl Jam, there were two other major bands that happened, and those two bands were Green River and Mother Love Bone. So founding Pearl Jam members Jeff Ament and Stone Gossard were a part of both of those bands. As far as Green River goes, they formed in the mid-1980s, and along with other Seattle bands such as Soundgarden, for example, they really were at the forefront of the grunge movement. Along with Ament and Gossard, you also had Mark Arm as the band's vocalist. You may know him from the band Mudhoney. Um, well, we were in a band called uh, Green River starting in about, like, I guess 1985 with, with Mark Arm and Alex Vinson and, and Steve Turner and Bruce Fairweather at different times as other guitar players. And uh, that was one of the very early sub pop bands. Us and Soundgarden actually had the first two records out on sub pop, which I don't know if you know what that is, but it's a. It's a Seattle independent label that's kind of spawned a lot of bands that are out now, like Nirvana and, and Soundgarden and Tad and Mudhoney. And, um, and we were in that band and we put out about three records on our own, kind of with Sub Pop. So the band toured and recorded with moderate success. However, they weren't really a commercially successful band. They were mostly just well known in their hometown of Seattle, and they would break up in 1987. Now, in late 1987, Gossard and Ament began playing with Malfunction's vocalist, and his name was Andrew Wood. Therein, a new group would be formed, which would eventually become known as Mother Love Bone. In 1988 and 1989, the band recorded and toured to increasing interest and found the support of the Polygram record label, which signed the band in early 1989. However, in March of 1990, the up-and-coming young vocalist who was just 24 years of age, Andrew Wood, was found dead of a heroin overdose. Mother Love Bone would release their one and only studio album that they made with Andrew Wood, and that was Apple. That was released just four months after Wood died in July of 1990. We formed Mother Love Bone with Andy Wood and Greg Gilmore. Um, and uh, we actually ended up getting a deal with Polygram and put a couple records out, an EP and an album, and, and our singer died of a heroin overdose. Ament and Gossard were devastated by the death of Wood and the resulting demise of Mother Love Bone. Gossard spent his time afterwards writing material with a harder edge than what he had been doing previously. After a few months, he started practicing with fellow Seattle guitarist Mike McCready whose band Shadow had broken up. It was at this point that McCready encouraged Stone Gossard to reconnect with Jeff Ament. After practicing for a while, the trio sent out a five-song demo tape in order to find a singer and a drummer. They gave former Red Hot Chili Peppers drummer Jack Irons the demo to see if he would be interested in joining the band and to distribute the demo to anyone he felt might fit the lead vocal position. At that point, Irons himself passed up on the invitation to join the band. However, we all know he would later become a member of Pearl Jam. But instead, what he did, he gave the demo to his friend, singer, Eddie Vedder. Vetter was the lead vocalist for a San Diego band named Bad Radio, and he also worked part-time at a gas station. He listened to the tape shortly before going surfing, one of Vetter's most favorite pastimes, and the lyrics, he said, just came to him. Now, a lot of you guys, I mean, two of your members that aren't here right now, Stone and Jeff, were in Mother Love Bone right. together. And how did the rest of you guys all kind of hook up? I was, um, I was surfing in San Diego, and I heard from my friend Jack who used to be in the Chili Peppers, and is now in a band called Eleven, which is amazing. But they asked, Stone and Jeff asked him if he wanted to play drums, and uh, he couldn't because of Eleven, but I got a call to try singing. He then recorded the vocals to three of the songs, Alive, Once, and Footsteps. I ended up playing with uh, a really good friend of mine in town named Mike McCready, um, who is now our guitar player, and we put some songs together, and. 
uh, played with Jeff and actually Matt Cameron um, and did a demo. Matt Cameron's the drummer for Soundgarden. And uh, that's the demo that, that Eddie got that he ended up singing like over three songs just on his own four track and sending him back up, and which was basically the beginnings of what is now Pearl Jam. Vetter sent the tape with his vocals back to the three Seattle musicians who were impressed enough to fly Vetter up to Seattle for an audition. Within a week, Vetter had joined the band. With the addition of Dave Crewson on drums, the band took the name of Mookie Blaylock, in reference to the then active basketball player. Now, if I'm not wrong, did you guys used to be called Mookie Blaylock? Yeah. That was you guys, yeah, right? Yeah, that was that us. Was us. Okay, now, um, and I guess for people that don't know, he was a basketball player on the New Jersey Nets. He's an amazing ball player. And I guess it was a matter of time before they said you had to change the name, right? No, actually, no, actually we just had a way to we used that for a little while, and actually, we haven't heard. Have we heard from his lawyer yet? We we heard he liked it. He, I think he might have felt we, we were a rap band or something. Uh -huh. yeah. We heard he liked it, and and um, but but ultimately we felt it was kind of a goofy name. And yeah. This is about as goofy as we get. Pearl it's Jam. Out of your show, yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, thanks. The band played its first official show at the Off Ramp Cafe in Seattle in October of 1990. They would go on to open for Alice in Chains in Seattle in December later that year and served as the opening act for Alice in Chains' facelift tour in 1991. Mookie Blaylock soon signed to Epic Records and renamed themselves Pearl Jam. So the name, Pearl Jam, where did that come from? Well, there is an interesting story behind that. Now, in an early promotional interview, Vetter said that the name Pearl Jam was a reference to his great-grandmother Pearl, who was married to a Native American who had a special recipe for a peyote-laced jam. And she was at one time married to an Indian chief who, in a, uh, a wonderful crossing of cultures, uh, she integrated some of his into some of hers, and. Um, it was uh, the combination of like peyote and preserves, and it was this hallucinogenic jam. It was Great Grandma Pearl's jam. But now we fast forward to a 2006 Rolling Stone interview with Vetter, where he admits that this story was just total bullshit. Even though he indeed did have a great grandma named Pearl, Jeff Ament and Mike McCready explained that Ament came up with the Pearl and that the band later settled on Pearl Jam after attending a concert by Neil Young, in which he extended his songs as improvisations of 15 to 20 minutes in length. In other words, an extended jam on his songs. Which is something that Pearl Jam will go on to do too, for example, when they extend their song Daughter into It's Okay, and stuff like that. So there you go guys, that is the history and the origins of how Pearl Jam came to be. Of course the band would go on in 1991 to release their hugely successful debut 10, and the rest is rock and roll history.